you look at the apostles in the Bible, most of them were killed or martyred for the faith, all right? If you look at John the Baptist, he was beheaded. If you look at the prophets in the Old Testament, most of them were always fearing for their life, you know, or, or, or even some of them were killed. Jesus Christ was crucified. Why? Because they were telling the truth, the unadulterated truth, all right? And they weren't sprinkling the sugar on it and getting it all sweet and nice for you. They were telling the truth straight up. They weren't walking around like Joe Osteen. Oh, God wants to bless you. And, oh, let me tell you, he wants to give you financial blessings and, oh, Oh, you sinned. Well, you know, that's okay because, you know, God still loves you and everything is good and everything is fine and everything is sunshine and rainbows. No, they were going around telling the truth. Go read the Bible for yourself. They were going around telling people, you got to repent. You got to turn from your wicked ways. Paul, man, if you read the letters of Paul, he was always rebuking the church and calling people out, man, saying, you got to change. You got to turn away from that. You know, it's not enough to say, oh, I accept Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm a live for Christ. There has to be a change that comes inside of you. And see, if you're going to preach about heaven, you also got to preach about hell. If you're going to preach about the blessings of God, you also got to preach about repentance and turning away from sin because God is a God of balance. But we, see, you see, we live in a day and age where people are so easily offended by truth and they don't want the truth. And they say, man, if you just would say it a little bit nicer. No, if you wanted the truth, all right, pride will leave you skinny. You're going to eat the truth up no matter what. And the thing is that I've noticed is you can sing the truth. You can preach the truth. You can teach the truth. But if a person's spirit isn't right, they're not going to want to accept the truth because you see what the truth begins to do, man. God's word is not going to return into him void. When you don't just pick and choose what parts of the word you're going to use and you just give the whole truth, man, it's going to start convicting people and it's going to start making them feel kind of uncomfortable in their spirit. And you're, begins, you're going to begin to step on their spiritual toes. And some people are not mature enough. They don't see the uh, sense of urgency that we're living in the last days and it's time to get right for God. And they're not trying to hear it. They want that message that's going to make their ears smile. Oh, no, just give me give me a motivational speaker. They don't want a preacher. They want a motivational speaker because they're in their flesh, because they're carnal. Oh, don't offend me. Don't hurt my feelings. Don't tell me that I need a change. Don't tell me that I need to stop listening to my Drake and my Kanye that I'm bumping. You know, I be looking at some of the things that I post and people trying to argue and defend these people. Why? Because you listening to them, because you supporting them, because you don't have no, because see, the thing about it is if you got the real spirit of God inside of you, you should feel some conviction all on your own. The spirit of God, the Bible says light and darkness can't dwell together. And some of you are feeding yourself so much garbage. That's why you have no spiritual insight. You're not fasting. You're not praying. You're not reading the word of God like you should. And you say, oh man, stop telling me what I'm not doing. Tell me something positive. Tell me something good. I'm not going to do that, man. I'm not going to tickle your ears. I'm going to tell you the truth like Paul so you can get right, so you can go stand before the Lord and he can say, well done, my good and faithful servant, so he can begin to use you in these last days. See, you, he can't use you if you straddle on the fence. He can't use you if you're comfortable being a mediocre Christian. In order for you to be on fire for God, you got to go through the fire. And a lot of you ain't going to make it through the fire because you're too sensitive. You're too in your feelings. You get offended when the preacher tells you, hey, you need to change that. Hey, you need to submit. Hey, you need to obey. Hey, you need to study some more. Hey, you need to fast more. Oh, who are you? Who are you to tell me something? You know, just go back to preaching about the goodness of God. Just go back to preaching about how God loves me. Just go back to preaching how God is going to accept me no matter what I do. Just go preach about that financial blessing I'm going to get. Go tell me how God's going to give me a new car. Tell me something that's just going to make me feel good. You know, they're drug addict saints. They just want a quick fix to get their flesh feeling right so they can feel good about themselves. The Bible talks about this, man. It's talking about people having a form of godliness but denying. Uh, denying the truth thereof, man. There's a there's a deeper thing, man. It's not enough to say, oh, I accept Jesus. Oh, I'm going to live for God. There's a transformation has to that has to take place. You got to live this thing. You've got to live this thing. And God has a purpose for all of us. God has a cross that all of us have to carry. He had to carry the cross and he said, follow, follow me, follow in his footsteps. He said, take up your cross, not your vacation packet. Some of you guys are living in this fairy tale Christianity, man, and your just head is just so in the clouds. The Bible says broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. We got a lot of dancers dancing on Broadway, you know, and they just good vibes, sunshine and rainbows. But Jesus never said it was going to be easy. Matter of fact, the Bible says count it not strange when you go through persecution and strange fire, man. So the thing about it is this, man, if the apostles was walking around just, you know, preaching that good stuff, even if Jesus was. You think they would have been so quick to stone him and kill him? No, because Jesus was telling people the truth about themselves. Oh, you Pharisees, he said. Oh, you hypocrites, you need to change. And people didn't like that. So they want to silence him. And they're going to do that to anybody who's telling the truth. But I'll tell you one thing about Marcus Rogers. 
Ain't nothing going to silence me because I know what I have in God. I know the relationship that I have with God. I know the fire that God has put me through. I know what he's told me to do. The only thing that's going to stop me is my death, man. And that's going to be by the grace of God that I'm able to endure that. But until then, don't follow me if you're trying to hear a message that's going to make you feel good. It's going to make you feel motivated. I'm trying to get you to live right. I'm trying to get you to be used by God. I'm trying to get you to make heaven your home. All right. You guys be blessed in Jesus' name. You know, just 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 pray to God. I, I promise that I love you. I promise that I do, man. But just pray to God humbly, humbly, and ask God to open your eyes. Ask God, man, is my relationship where it needs to be with you? All right? You got to become God's best friend, and he'll start giving you deeper revelations. I know a lot of you don't understand everything that I post, and it would be different if we could talk one-on-one. -on -one. But just because you don't understand it or you don't like the messenger or you don't like the way that it was delivered does not mean it's not God. You got to humble yourself. You guys, be blessed in Jesus' name. Love you. I promise that I do. Let's make heaven our home. Hate me now. Hug me in heaven.